It's summer. The sun's in my eyes and it is too bright to open them. And everything has turned beige. So we're sitting at about a week and maybe three days. And they're kind of hard to see. But we have some amaranth in one corn over there. We have one over here. And we have a lot of sunflowers. And some of the sunflowers are even getting their second set of leaves in. All right, here we are at two weeks. All four of those corn plants have come up. And we have six over here as well. So it looks like all of those have successfully sprouted. We have amaranth. We had a mystery seed, but he appears to not have made it. We'll see if he rebounds, but I don't think so. More corn here. And a mixture of sunflowers and corn. Most everything is doing to its second leaves now, which is good. So now that we're at the two week mark, which is probably halfway between starting this venture and being able to put the second round of uh, seeds in. I want to talk about the fact that I am impatient when it comes to everything and particularly with gardening and permaculture type work I have found that patience is something that you will be forced to cultivate whether you want to or not because things do grow in their own time and they don't care about what your expectations are. I will admit that with these seeds I was um, almost ready to be like well I guess the corn seeds went bad and we just will have to figure something else out to put in on these mounds even though I knew it would be at least a week to two weeks before we saw anything come out of the ground and yet I was so quick to just be like well I guess that's it. It didn't work out and I have found just from watching everything over the course of one year that it really does kind of grow unexpectedly and it grows usually at a slower pace than you anticipate. So if there's one thing I would say to keep in mind if you're just starting out like we are, be patient. Be patient and don't give up because you never know what type of success you're going to have if you just assume that you failed before you even really gave something a shot and to remember that Nature works at its own pace and its own time. And I think in our hectic culture, we forget how long things actually take. Um, and just remember that things are gonna happen in their own time and to not rush it, or at least try not to rush it and try not to get too impatient while you wait for things to pan out. So far, this is the year of bugs. Can you see all of the ants down here? We have so many more ants and other flies this season than we did last year. the bugs that are all over everything. Everything is bugs this year. Something's been eating a lot of our stuff, so we need to figure out how to get stuff to quit eating our plants. And we also have a fair amount of mushrooms growing. And there's an amber. Elsewhere in the yard, Remember how I said it'd be the year of bugs? All right, so we're back out here. It's almost at three weeks and we are back out here before the three week mark because as I mentioned in the last update, it's the year of bugs and the bugs have finally started to affect the growth of our sprouts. So we're gonna come out here and try a couple different things and hope that it helps to slow the destruction of our seedlings. Um, the thing that's been hit the hardest is definitely sunflowers. I will tell you that I have yet to really hardly grow any sunflowers out here. Every single one, all but two of them, have been destroyed in the seedling phase. It never fails. Something either pulls the sprout out of the ground or the sprout gets eaten or the leaves get eaten. Sunflowers, for whatever reason, are really, really hard out here. Um, the corn is still hanging in there, but some of the sprouts have definitely suffered damage and the amaranth got completely destroyed somewhere around week 
two and a half. <laughs> uh, the things that we're going to try today is we have noticed online that people have mentioned putting cups around the base of their sprouts and that somehow that can help with the potato bug issue. So we're going to give that a shot. We're also going to add some diatomaceous earth to the ground to see if that helps to mitigate some of the issues that we're having. We're going to continue to spray a garlic dish soap and neem oil combination to help stop the eating of the leaves. And then finally we are also going to add some mulch nearby to see if it will help attract the bugs to that and stay out of the garden. So let's get to work. So here's where we're at now. As you can see we've got cups out. I didn't have enough cups for every single plant so I put them mostly over the sunflowers since they are the most sought after right now. Put some diatomaceous earth around everything else just to dissuade anything else from coming in for the plants that do not have protection and then I'll go find some more cups and make some for them as well. Here we are a few days later. As you can see, a large portion of our sunflower seeds did not make it and very well likely won't. So we may plant some more. I think we have a total of four left. One, two, three. So three, and maybe this one, four. I don't think the cups did very much. Um, the diatomaceous earth is likely what did the best. So I'm probably gonna keep reapplying every couple days just in case the water erodes it until the insects are less of an issue overall, which I expect will happen once it gets warmer. So we'll see. We know we said we were gonna wait until the sprouts got taller, but since this corn is such a short variety, we decided we were just gonna start planting our bean seeds anyways. It's been about three weeks since we first put the seeds in the ground and we're just trying to make sure that it doesn't get too hot before we uh, put them in the ground. So putting a whole variety of tepary beans and amaranth and some jade beans. And I hope you can hear the bees because everything's starting to bloom. And there are bees everywhere up higher in this tree. Planting seeds about as exciting as watching paint dry or water boil. Woo. Is it sad? Are you not outside? Is that disappointing? So while I'm out here, let's take a look at what else we have going on. Flowers, where the flowers used to be. This one came out last night and just had a party. This is like the only leaves left on the whole damn thing. So we have all of these false cinch weed, cinch bugs? Cinch bugs all over everything. You can see them on my hand here now. And 
so we put a fresh layer of cocaine down because they were all over the plants. And now the plants are a little sad. Can't see very well from this angle, but there are some fresh tepary bean sprouts up in this area. I think there's one there. Uh, so hopefully that stuff's coming along if all the bugs would quit eating everything first. All right, so it's a day later and the bugs seem to dislike the DE, so it seems to be doing a little bit better today. These ones have certainly taken the hardest hit and they look the worst. We have a couple sunflowers that are still left and the ones that are left look pretty strong. The corn's doing pretty well over here too. You can see that we have some of the beans coming up. These corn are doing the best and the worst because one of them is completely gone and two of them are really strong and one's pretty weak. So we also have beans coming up over here as well. So the bugs are on their BS every day, but we still have some stuff left. Begrudging as I am to say it, I am thinking of putting a little bit of a kill line right around the edge, this tiny little edge here, to see if it'll help keep some of these bugs out. They are everywhere. So we are officially at a month to the day, and this is what the bugs look like. How many there are. And this is less than what we've had. But the best part is there's still plants inside and there's hardly any bugs on them at all. So let's uh, clean these bugs off and take a look at what's inside. What sucks is at the one month mark, they grew wings and now they are constantly running into you and crawling on your legs. So I did what I didn't want to have to do, and I pulled out the commercial grade bug spray that we use. Um, we have it around because when we moved in, our property was actually infested with ticks. And if there's one thing I cannot stand, it is ticks in my house. So we got it, and the ticks have actually more or less been handled, so we don't have to use it very often. But we do have it, and I did use it. We put a line around the exterior of the vegetable garden, basically where all of the nice London Rocket is slowly dying. Turns out chinch bugs really like London Rocket, so it stands to reason that they're going to be everywhere where the London Rocket is and was. And while this is really frustrating, certainly a lesson learned that next year the London Rocket needs to be kept in more specific places so that way we don't have this problem again. Uh, basically don't leave it anywhere next to what you don't want eaten or taken over by bugs. <laughs> but um, I've also put it in a couple other strategic places so that way it can hopefully take some of the numbers down. I imagine that they're going to want to leave as less and less food is available so it's really a matter of just keeping everything else safe and just convincing them to leave over eating what plants I do have. I don't want to kill all the good bugs and all the stuff that's been on property that we've been building up, so I'm trying to just take out specifically what we want and leave everything else relatively intact. So I am trying to be judicious in where I apply it and how it's applied and how often, but man, it was great to come out today and not see a single bug on our vegetables. So that portion, if nothing else, will likely stay the same because I don't want to watch all of our plants die. Um, it never fails. Every year you try something new and something, something always comes up and certainly that can be frustrating. But uh, hopefully it'll be a lesson learned and we won't have to repeat this mistake again. Despite all the bugs, I think that the tomato bush is by far the real dark horse right now. I'm surprised it's managed to do as well as it has and we've kind of tied it up to try and make it less 
inviting to bugs and birds. The other one that's surprising are these two pea plants that have been tucked back here next to the house. They came up very late in the season, even though we put them in last fall. And I guess because they're in this little microclimate, protected by a tree, a bird of paradise, and a tomato, they've somehow managed to hold on. And I'm hoping, oof, my finger, I'm hoping that they manage to actually produce and last a little longer and don't completely die as soon as the heat hits, so I guess we'll see. He has the biggest freaking saddles. Yeah. His legs are like little stumpies. <laughs> 